You guys have been requesting this video for quite a while and I've been wanting to do it as well and that is to take a look at PostgreSQL. This is a really cool library that takes your PostgreSQL database or schema and turns it into a GraphQL API automatically. You don't have to do any coding at all if you don't want to. And now I'm looking at the GitHub page right now. It looks like I caught it at kind of an awkward time. It's transitioning from version 3 to version 4 and a lot of big things are happening. And one of them is it looks like they're renaming themselves to post Graphile. But nonetheless, let's take a look at what this is and how it works. So I already installed this on my computer with npm and uh, I'm going to run this command right here on my Slack database which I made in the uh, Slack series that I did. So here I'm running PostgraphQL and then just the uh, URL that you need to connect to the database. So running that, um, that's all you really need and you have your server built in your GraphQL API. So what we're going to take a look at is the graphical and kind of test out the endpoint and see what it gives you out of the box. So here I have graphical open and if this is your first time using PostgraphQL you might be wondering what the heck do you type here, right? What do you I don't know what commands to write. Well, the nice thing about GraphQL is it has these handy docs right over here so you can see what's going on. And you'll notice there's a lot of stuff. If you click on query, um, my first impression when doing this was there's a lot of junk in here for some reason. Maybe there's because I'm just not used to post GraphQL and this is all needed. Um, and this is just like advanced stuff, but like int contains join cell. I don't know what this is, or int contained int match cell, and then it's very vague. arg0, arg1, arg2, arg3, int overlap. I don't know what any of these things does. But if you scroll past all this junk, you'll actually find some decent uh, things. So this is when things get interesting. So for example, all channels, all direct messages, these are all tables that I had. So all members. And the one that I wanted to look at was all teams. And we can run this query. So all teams. Um, the cool thing about this too is it makes it compatible with Relay, which is a a uh, front-end thing which is a client for a GraphQL and uh, they use edges and nodes and now I can get the name if I want to and I can see the name of all of these teams um, in my database but you'll notice the documentation is a little bit better for these uh, order by before last offset um, this makes sense and first thing that was very cool is all the features that you get off the bat without doing anything so I get to sort things if we click on this I can see all the ways I can sort this so I can say order by and I can sort by the name if I want to name ascending name descending um, and it has all my different options of how I might want to sort something um, also I'm going to search the docs all teams also the thing I really liked was the condition this is actually something I didn't even know you could do um, but condition and it's nice they have all these docs on what each thing does as well so if I click on team condition I actually just what well, looks like kind of an object and I select what I want it to be equal to so my ID here ID let's say I want the ID to be 3 run that only fetches ID equal to 3 so this is pretty cool I haven't seen this type of syntax in GraphQL before um, mainly I've just passed in uh, I haven't passed in objects as parameters before, but I mean, it makes sense you can do that. So here are all your options that you can do for that. And uh, it just looked really nice. And like, I don't have to do pagination. It gives me all the pagination stuff already. A lot of it is already done. So I was super impressed and I really like that because a lot of the work is done with you. Um, and it does this for all the tables, right? It's not just teams. You guys saw members, users. Um, and then the mutations are uh, plenty as well. There's a lot of them going on. So I really liked it. My only, and this is something I liked how much time, like I did no work whatsoever in three up and running. My only concern with these types of uh, libraries and this type of thing is anytime you're doing anything besides a CRUD operation. So create, read, update, or delete. Besides that, it uh, can sometimes be hard to do or fall apart. 
Um, but the nice thing about PostgreSQL is it looks like um, authentication is easy to do. So they have a point here about token-based authentication using JWT tokens, which I like. Um, and you can also do permissions and stuff inside the database itself. So they seem to have covered a lot of the cases, um, but there's a lot of other things that uh, I want to look into and see how easy they are to do with it. For example, if I wanted to do images, um, let's say I want to start taking payments, if I want to integrate with Stripe or something, um, or if I wanted to use persistent or uh, persist GraphQL, which is really good for uh, production, and I'd want to use this if I was in production, and I would want to use PostgraphQL in production if it uh, allowed this, which I think it should be able to because they have this thing called graph aisle build which I don't know if it's considered out yet it looks like it's really close to out if it's not out I think it's in beta right now um, and what you can do with this is you can attach plugins and run this in an express server so notice how right this thing over here this is just me running this command I don't see any code under the hood but uh, it allow you to hook this into uh, GraphQL and Express and right here I can add my own types and things on top of what they give me and this is really important uh, and I actually want to play around with this more and see how powerful this is because I like that it takes away all my all of the work that I have to do with the crud and that's something that should be there I don't want to have to do that every time you guys have if you watch any of my other series it can be kind of redundant to add create this create that create that or read for each single object you have in your database and you're basically replicating the code each time but changing the name so being able to plug this into like an express server and then being able to extend it is really nice and they're taking it into a nice direction which uh, i really appreciate and i could see myself definitely using this for a project and then if it works out well using it in production because this thing can just speed up your uh, the work it takes to get uh, up and running. But uh, I'm going to wait and see where this goes. And uh, wait for them to release version 4. When that's out, I'm going to come back, maybe do a series with it, and uh, check it out, what it's like to actually use this thing with an express server, and then extend it, right? Add some of the other things that I want it to have. But in the time being, another thing I'm looking at, recently released, is Prisma. Uh, I'm going to be making a video shortly about this, checking this out. This is from the people that make GraphQL. And uh, this is the same thing, turn your database into a GraphQL API. So we can kind of compare and contrast what Prisma is like versus uh, GraphIle or gra post-GraphIle, I suppose. Um, but I believe this is just MySQL right now, uh, but uh, we'll get more into this later. That's it for now, guys. Uh, those are just kind of some of my thoughts about PostgreSQL and where I'm at. So I'm going to leave it for now, come back to it when version 4 is out, and then spend some time testing it, whether this is worth using and spending more, because it is a big time saver if it is easy to extend for uh, other cases. Thanks for watching, guys.